It's one of the great sights in Australian motorsport. Looking down from the Barry Sheen grandstand along the main straight here at Clipsal. Thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of people come here across the course of the event. So there are the race stats for you. 250 k's equates to 78 laps. And it will be 26 starters for the second race of the season. Race one yesterday, a thriller taken out by Jamie Wincup. An emotional race victory for Jamie. And we've been blessed with the weather. And it looks as though it will continue throughout the afternoon. Here's our racetrack for today's contest. Second race in 27, as Mark Larkham said a little bit earlier. We've got 14 turns, a little over three kilometres of racetrack, 3.22 to be precise. 240 kilometre an hour or so. Top speed, slowest corner is turn nine there. The hairpin, it's about 60 kilometres an hour with an average speed of just over 140 kilometres an hour. Lap record, new one set yesterday. Jamie Wincup, he peeled nearly 0.9 of a second out of the old record held by James Courtney set in 2010. It was an astonishing drive in beautiful conditions and you had that car working. Even with heavy fuel loads, Mark Scape, we studied those lap times last night and looked at a block of laps. There were 10 of them in sequence that varied only by about a tenth of a second each. It was unbelievable. 21.8 through to 22.1 in that whole period and it was absolute qualifying material, wasn't it, for 10 laps? It was a very, very good drive. Seventh race victory on these streets. It was yesterday for Jamie Winkup and in fact the front row of the grid between him and Tanda, they've had 10 race wins around here. It's not an easy place to crack it, but those who do somehow manage to find the groove when they come back and repeat the dose. Other winners who are in the field include Jason Bright, Todd Kelly, Rick Kelly, and Craig Lowndes as well. So the grid is starting to clear. Time for our national anthem, performed today by Vanessa Amorosi. feel this event last night. Good Charlotte living end on tonight. The Madden brothers have been cruising around all day. Absolutely love it. So does Vanessa. And now it's time to get down to business, Larko. Hey, uh, James Courtney's down here in pit lane. They're starting him down here. Now, after that shunt, they were up all night, as you know, trying to repair the car. They're not comfortable because they broke a tail shaft uh, this morning, so they haven't really run the car sufficiently to know that it's been safely repaired. So they decided they're going to start from the pit lane. And you know about this fuel strategy we've talked about. They'll be able to squeeze another two litres in here now, uh, missing out on that lap. So, uh, you know, might pay a dividend later in the day. It doesn't sound like much, does it? But we saw yesterday, every drop counts. Well, that'll buy you the best part of three quarters of a lap. I saw Mark Larkham earlier on in the tech centre for Dick Smith explaining as we go to the Fuso starting grid to have a look at our lineup for this afternoon. Gee whiz, a few millilitres of fuel made the difference yesterday. Our front row is Wincup and Tander. It's all holding. Row two of the grid. Mark Winterbottom, the leading forward fighter. Craig Lowndes there, started on pole yesterday. He starts in position four. Good job from Rick Kelly, Jack Daniels racing. He'll be alongside Will Davison for the trading post Ford. Lee Holdsworth in his first hit out yesterday for a Ford was yeah, top five. Great Tim great Slade's great next great to him. Great. Positions nine and ten belong to the young Kiwi Shane Van Gisberg and a Michael Caruso married in the off season. David Reynolds yesterday found the wall at turn eight. He's got Todd Kelly alongside him. Tony Dalberto and Fabian Coulthard make up 
Positions 13 and 14. There's Jason Bright, another victim down at Turn 8. Went to hospital, got a sore shoulder, and he's back and ready to rumble. Michael Patrizzi, Techno Auto Sports, and Steve Owen for VIP Petwoods out of Dick Johnson Racing. There's Dean Fiore, also out of DJR, and James Moffat, Team Norton as well, so they're all ganging up. Russell Inglecar, 66 this year. Alex Premier, a Frenchman. As his second V8 supercar start and Taz Douglas, Team I Select, also into that wall at Turn 8. And our final row of the grid, well, it won't include James Courtney because we know he's going to start from pit lane, but David Wall will be back there in car 21. So 26 starters for this one. On the subject of Davids, we're on board with one of them, David Reynolds, Botlow Racing Ford. A lot of work on that car last night, and they fixed that and were done and dusted and out of here by about 1.30. He was suffering the effects of heat. Several drivers chose not to use their cool suits yesterday, but the vast majority did. Now, yesterday, we had Gary Rogers as part of our crew. We whacked a headphone on him, we gave him a microphone. We've just wandered a little bit further down, and we've got Dick Johnson today. G'day, mate. Yeah, good. We're going to put you to work today. We're going to go inside this little cabin that you've got in there. We're going to get all the lowdown from Jim Beam Racing. So you know how it works. We want scoops every time we come to you. <laughs> well done, DJ. Good job. Hey, listen, how are you going with the four-car operation this year? <laughs> all right, we're going to check in with you as we go and... Uh, Track your fortunes. Good on you, Dick Johnson. And the all-time greats of the sport. Give you an insight into a full team operation. Bingo. Big Pond Sport, of course. We'll have all our coverage for you. All you've got to do is take your Telstra Next G Mobile if you need to get up off the lounge any time this afternoon. It's not advised because this one always throws down a thriller. You couldn't take your eyes off it yesterday. It's been the way since we've been coming here in 19, since 1999, the first Clipsal 500. That's the view from Frosty's car, Mark Winterbottom. We saw a great start yesterday with Tander versus Lounge. This is Tander versus Wink Up. Tander's start yesterday was fantastic. And this will be very interesting to see who gets the jump from the left or the right. Here we go. Let's get it on, race two of the year. And another great jump from Garth Tander. He will certainly cross over in front of Wing Cup. That's a repeat performance from the Holden Racing Team's go-to guy. He takes it through the centre chicane. Will Davison had a big dive at Craig Lowndes and they got through there together, but only just. Whoa, oh, he's got Michael Caruso and he goes and backs it, backs it into the fence. Oh, and that's going to be close. See, James Courtney comes out of pit lane, starts out of pit lane, and arrives down there at that turn to see Michael Caruso facing the wrong way. Around turn seven, along Brock Strait, down in the most fearsome and awesome corner. Here it is, turn eight. Right out to the wall. Nice jump away for Tander, nice opening margin on cold tyres in the first lap, watch for them all. Nose to tail down there in the hairpin at turn nine, it's got about two to three car lengths, Tander. Quite a few people had to straight line the chicane off the start. Remarkable that they all got cleanly through, so far only Caruso casualty at turn four. Especially with uh, Will Davison and Craig Lowndes. It was a very late dive and the two of them were sideways and they got through there together and normally you'd see contact. So a pretty clean first lap, Garth Tander. Have a look at this shot, this is fantastic. Standing lap time for Tanda faster today than it was yesterday. He did a 127.1, so he's pressing on. And clearly, Wind Cup's running with him. He's very close. Even one lap in as the brake temperatures and tyre pressures and tyre temperatures begin to normalise. Three cars are locked in battle here, and Lowndes in fifth has done the fastest split to the first sector. So Winterbottom also made a nice start. He followed Wind Cup into the first corner. <laughs> Yes, 
today to see James Courtney already gone in. Team I select bounced off the walls. He got a move done there, though. He did. That was a good pass, actually. Straight down the inside of uh, Carl Reindler. Lance going on with it in the second sector split here as well with good car speed. They're coming up to the end of their first flying lap. We'll get a read on Tander's pace. He's already opened up a little gap. But look at Winterbottom on the back of Wing Cup here. Davison's done a 22-8. Tander a 23-3. Wow, Jamie just skipped and slipped out of turn two. The back of the thing bouncing over the curb. And he had to cover. He had to cover then because Winterbottom had the run. And Winterbottom's speed looks very impressive. The car looks very good in the early laps. He's got to do the crisscross the criss now. He's got to get back the other side. And Mark's got the ability at the moment to place the car where he wants, so he's positioning it high and low, looking for a way around. So only one lap ago, Wing Cup was menacing the back of Tandem. Suddenly he's just lost a beat or two, and he's under threat. Tim Slade's done the fastest split to the end of the first sector at the moment. Will Davison is going with his teammate, Mark Winterbottom. They're all ganging up at the moment on Jamie Winkup. Garth Tander's doing it nice and steady. He leads this race by half a second, but now it's all backing up. I was just about to say, Matt, all that group, in terms of the first six cars, have now just bunched up. So even to the back there with Rick Kelly, you can see Rick in there behind Craig Lowndes. They've, they're all together by one and a half seconds. This is this curb cam shot we showed you yesterday. We use all of the suspension travel and some you can see the forces then generated into the body of the car and a very important part of the lap is how they ride that bump and how they get over that curve sunlight on the racetrack it's a comparable temperature to the same time yesterday track temp at the moment's 35 it was 36 at this point yesterday's race so car behavior should be similar lee holdsworth has just done the fastest time it's really interesting that group there that is sitting behind mark winterbottom will davison craig lowndes Rick Kelly, Tim Slade, now Lee Holdsworth are all posting super quick times. They're all doing it together. They're working as a team, if you like, to get up towards the rear of Winterbottom and have a crack at Winker. Well, it's basically nine cars in that group there, Matt, and there's only three seconds between the nine, so very, very close. Slade again with the fastest first sector. Lee Holdsworth, as you said, with the fastest time so far. And drivers are being encouraged by engineers at the moment to wind up the fuel and pour it through in order to make lap time to get early position. So they don't mind sacrificing a little bit of a fuel burn early in the race if that's what's required. Down oh. the inside, Patrizzi, he puts a move on Bright and it stinks. Well, Bright did a good job then because that was going to be contact. Bright actually moved the car out of the way, didn't he? He, he, pre, he sort of preempted the move and at the end uh, avoided contact. When these guys went through there in turn nine, boys, Jamie Winkup had a look at Garth Tander. It's the first time he's had a look since the start, since Tanda took pole position away from him. Well, we're in for a great race, guys, because when you have nine cars like that, as close as it is, it is amazingly close to the front of this field at the moment. So Tanda leads the way. It is a freight train of speed at the moment at the Clipsal 500. So the hurry flurry, the first couple of laps is done. We're in a rhythm, and Tanda's got pressure. The fastest man on the road is Van Gisbergen, 22-5, last time around. It's Tanda from Winkup, Winterbottom and Davison, Lowndes and Rick Kelly. Slade's got a fast car, the lucky seven forward, fastest to the first sector this time around. Then Holdsworth, then Van Gisbergen. So the Stones car's running. Line of Stern, or should that be Line of Stone? That was close, Winkup had a massive moment at turn eight, under great pressure from Winterbottom. Reynolds is 10, then it's Tom Kelly, Kulta, Del Perdo, Johnson, Patrizzi. They are lined up nose to tail here. No one's getting away. And a big mover further back, Taz Douglas, that repaired car, started 23rd. He's up to 18th already. But this is the end of lap five. The top nine, nose to tail. Van Gisberg, car nine is position nine. And that's David Reynolds just coming onto the front straight. On my board is 10. Tanner, 22.5, new fastest lap. This is an arm wrestle. This is classic Clipsal stuff. And Tanner and Winkup are two of the men who have dominated these streets for the best part of the last five or six years. Between them, they've won every Clipsal race from 2008 onwards. No one else has done it. 
new fastest lap in the race at the tail of the field. Michael Caruso, 122.48. Remember, had a spin on first lap. It's 29 seconds off the leader. Through turn eight again, the fastest in the corner on this track. It's claimed so many cars. He claimed four yesterday. Last year. This is classic V8 supercar stuff on the streets of Adelaide. Nothing in it between the top nine. They're all in the 22s. 22 8 10, 22.5 for Wink Cup, 22.7 for Winnebog, 22.6 for Will Davison. Reynolds fastest that time, 22.4. old teammate from many moons ago. These two were together at Gary Rogers' team in 2003. Seems like a lifetime ago. And now they're duking it out in this second race of 27 in the championship. Four performance racing are again strong. Third and fourth. Their third car is tenth. There's the huddle at Team Vodafone. Tony Monks and the team. They've got two guys right among the action. Rick Kelly having a look at Craig Lowndes the fifth spot. High shot from turn nine into turn ten, back to Victoria Park. This is good stuff, lap seven. Well, it's game on, all right. This is classic stuff at the start of this race. An incredible tussle at the front. Tanda holding off Wind Cup. Winterbottom's breathing down his neck. Replay here of turn eight. Watch Jamie Winkup. Does he get the wall? He just brushed it, grabbed the mirror, maybe rubbed the rim on the left side of the car up against the concrete. Here it is again from the chopper. We held our breath in the break. He's done it several times over the course of the weekend and got away with it, including in the race yesterday. Here it is again from the other angle. Looks worse from that angle. And again, actually picked the curb up on the inside. See the little bounce of the car, and there goes the fascia on the mirror. Sorry, mate, we've got a change on for the lead here. And so now, Wind Cup through the inside, gets the job done at turn nine. Apologies, Larko, we'll come back to that. It's too good at the front of the field. It was brewing and brewing and brewing, and he finally got it done on lap seven. On lap eight, correction. He's finally got it done. Wind Cup gets past him. It's incredible. Of all these guys in the top ten, about six of them have posted fastest lap times. They keep responding. Now, they told Jamie to go to full reach, get the pass done, and then settle into a rhythm. So that's exactly what he's done, almost. At the exact moment he was told to do that, he found some pace. He was lagging three or four car lengths at that point. Now it looks as though Tand is vulnerable to Winterbottom. Winterbottom's looked pacey the whole time, hasn't he? Basically from the start, and the front of the car's very good. He's getting, he gets it turned, he gets to the apex better than any other car in the first three at the moment. And the little break, look how much Wink Cup is being held up, because he's already got a 0.8 of a second gap lead over Garth Tander. Now what Winterbottom's got to do is he's got to set him up. He's got to get through here, turn eight, you've got to take a big breath and get through here so you're close enough for the turn nine pass, Ooh. too far back, big and slide. Frosty was sliding it big time through there, so fastest lap win cut, also the fastest man to the second sector on this lap. Lowndes is into his allocation across the curbing a bit more today than he was yesterday. And at the back of the field, Caruso, who was stuck at turn four, here's the replay again, by the oh, way. It's a big dive. It's a it? huge dive. <laughs> he managed to stop it just in time, went back to first gear to do it. Uh, Caruso's got good speed is the point there. He's back in 26, but he's having a crack. That's Here it is again from the chopper. I can't believe he can get away with that well, from that far back. Garth sided him and actually left a half a steering width for him and just eased it back. 
This will be frosty. Watch this. Watch how wide he goes. Oh, just got really tailing. 21.99 for Wink Up, fastest lap of the race. Three tenths faster than the next car, basically, in that little uh, one, one lap foray into the lead. So, winner bottom with huge pressure on Tanda. His teammate, Will Davison, right behind. Craig Lowndes, right behind. Rick Kelly, Tim Slade, Lee Holdsworth, and Shane Van Gisbergen. All those guys, those nine cars, are within four seconds. And they've all got genuine pace. Scafie. Absolutely. Now, Wink Cup has also just had a curb strike as well, together with his teammate and Mark Dutton. Jamie Wink Cup's engineer has warned him of that. So remember yesterday, we talked about the fact that they both had credit all the way to the end of the race. So it's indicative of the pace and the pressure that's on at the moment. Now, Tanda's responded with the fastest split to the second sector, and this is the battle for sixth and seventh, Todd Kelly and Tim Slade. Tim was quick earlier today. They've definitely found a little bit of pace overnight as they've refined the behaviour and performance of these cars at Lucky Seven and Stone Brothers. And remember, it's a brand new car for Tim Slade. So Rick was right up in behind Lowndes. He's lost a bit of contact there. So he's fallen back into the clutches. You can see that gap there now behind Lowndes. He's fallen into the clutches of Tim Slade. In behind is Tim Slade's teammate, new teammate, Lee Holdsworth, obviously with the shift from Holden to Ford, from Gary Rogers now to Stone Brothers Racing. Curious to look at the, the speed that ties those cars together, Mark, because you've got Slade, Holdsworth, Van Gisbergen, uh, line of stern seven, eight, and nine, so all their cars behaving similarly. Super slow-mo replay at one and two. Big air off one here for Wind Cup, and this is the reason why he got the strike for two, yeah. which Mark Dutton's speaking to him again about as I speak. So he lands it, but that's too far to the right of the turn two curbing. Lowndes, fastest man to the end of sector one at the moment. So intriguing battle with the first five cars in particular. Any of them at this point are fast enough to win this race. It's always a good feeling at the start of this race when you know that you've got a good car under you, that you can feel that you've got genuine car speed. It's a very long day if the car's not good here, mate, isn't it? I mean, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a very tough event to keep on balancing the car and tuning the car through the day. So the sway bar settings right now, with a full load of fuel, you'll have the bar settings up and make the car work. And then as the fuel comes off, you'll tune the sway bars to try to keep some sort of balance in the car. You've also got to do that for the brakes as the fuel load comes off also. On board now with Mark Winterbottom. Let's have a look at the throttle application and the brake pressure that's required. That's a heavy brake back to fourth gear through that first chicane complex. And that left ankle is broken. <laughs> so lucky it's the right foot that's doing the work, although the left one's got a bit to do there at the moment. But uh, he said it's not so bad in the car, but he's finding it hard to spend a long time standing up on the concrete all day long. And he was getting nervous at the start yesterday as well because it was starting to hurt while he was waiting to launch. And he said, actually, I've got one of my best starts. I just yeah. wanted to get away. Well, he's sitting down now, Neil. He's all right. It's Two screws in that left ankle, courtesy of a water skiing accident. Very few drivers get to turn up to the launch of their own cars and crutches. Watch this. Out of the throttle, out of the throttle. Little brake, and that's turn eight. So that's the level of commitment. 240 kilometres an hour, a little brake to wash about 30 k's off, turn the car at the corner at 215 kilometres an hour, and get back to 240 again for turn nine. It's a fantastic bit of racetrack on the streets of Adelaide. It's great stuff. Wing Cup leads the way, but there's a hungry pack chasing him down. Great shot. And Mark went bottom of work. Yesterday, had to pit late in the race. He ended up ninth. And at the moment, he runs third. Wing Cup lowers the mark. 21.97 that time through. 1.37 seconds the margin of Tanda. Remember that both the team Vodafone drivers have one curve strike. On the third, they'll get a bad sportsmanship flag. On the fourth, they'll get a pit lane penalty. They'll have to drive through the lane at 40 kilometers per hour. On board with Mark Winterbottom. The Auckland Steel FBR Ford. Still hunting his first Clipsal victory. Has not got it done yet. He's runner up here a few years ago. Saturday. Sunday hasn't been so kind here for the majority of his career. But he's been on the podium the last two years. He's had third in 2010, 2011. He's in the box seat here to challenge again.
brings them back into Victoria Park. From outside of the streets to the Parkland area. Turn 13, up over the curb, pit lane entry to the right. And this grandstand really does roar. By shot, turn one, centre chicane. Winterbottom gets a strike. He went too wide there. Here's Patrizzi in the lane with left front. Clearly with a little bit of rubber there from the tyre bundle, the first chicane. So they're going to get him out of the traffic. That's Perry Capper on the radio, who engineered James Moffat last year at Jim Beam Racing. Patrizzi heads back into the fray, finished 15th yesterday. 16th, I should say. In fact, 14. He was better than I gave him. This is the high shot from turn eight towards turn nine, the hairpin. So now four of the top ten have one curb strike. Wind Cup and Winter Bottom Lounge at Van Gisbergen. Still a long day left. Lots to go. There's two drivers on two. Taz Douglas in 18th and David Wall in 23rd. Lock up, big lock up down into turn 14. As Winterbottom keeps the pressure on the works Commodore. Of course, Holden Racing Team run by Walkinshaw Racing. Ryan Walkinshaw is here this weekend. And it's the first race for Steve Hallam, the new head of Walkinshaw Racing. The other car with James Courtney has moved up the field. Remember, he started from pit lane. The former champ is up to 19th now. Tan's hanging on. Winterbottom's lined up. He's got pace, but just not able to get it done. Lap 15, we're in a rhythm. Race to the championship on the streets of Adelaide at the Clipsal 500. Supercars on seven, Jamie Winkup, our race leader. Mark Winterbottom is having a big, big look at Garth Tander, who made a slight error last lap around. And Frosty now has his sights firmly set on Garth Tander. Lucky to get away with that. Lucky to not end up off the track in the grass on the left-hand side there. Everybody's talking safety cars. Lowndes was very wide at the last corner then. I don't know whether you noticed from the chopper shot, but uh, when Tim was talking there to Barretts, 
in the background. Lowndes was looking pretty out of shape. He managed to scramble it together. Gee, there's big pressure at the front of the field. What I want to do, though, is go back down into the bunker at Dick Johnson Racing. Dick standing by because we saw that James Moffat's in there. DJ, what's the story? Any better, mate, on the data. Looks, uh, looks all good pace-wise. Oh, DJ, in your day, you would have driven the whole day without power steering with young blokes, mate. What's going on? <laughs> and yesterday, Dick uh, James was really struggling at the end of the day. It was very, very hot and they carted him away, so he's had a tough physical day the day before anyway. All right, will you get James back out there? Will you get James back out there? All Thanks, right. DJ. All the best, mate. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that stuff can be a pump or it could also be a rack. If it's a rack, it's quite a... Well, yeah. both those things are going to take quite a bit of time to resolve, so... Initially, they'll just look for leaks or something simple, but it might be bigger than that. Stevie Johnson's the leading DJR car in 13th spot. Jamie Wincup, by the way, has just done the fastest time to the first sector. He's got a 1.8 second lead as we zero in on car number three, Tony Dalberto, in 12th spot. That's Fabian Coulthard in front of him. Now, we've already passed the point where yesterday Wincup came out of the sequence and committed to a three-stop strategy essentially at that point on lap 15. Haven't really seen anybody blink at this point. James Moffat, as we just detailed, is in the bunker with a power steering issue. A couple of guys weren't able to front after incidents of qualifying. have just joined our coverage this afternoon. Jonathan Webb and Greg Murphy found each other in qualifying in a frightening incident. So 26 cars took the start. One of them's in the pit lane, 25 cars active on the racetrack, and there's a 49 seconds spread between them at the moment. And James Courtney, who started from pit lane, is 18th. So for Courtney fans, he's come through the field very well and in 18th position behind Steve Owen. All that pressure at the start with the top 10 and all those guys carrying so much speed. They were trading fastest lap times. Five out of the top 10 have got one strike next to their name for the curbs up at uh, turn one and two. So the deal is, you get three strikes, you get a bad sportsmanship flag. You do it once more, you're in pit lane. And what Neil was saying, that's exactly right, Matt. So what Neil was saying earlier with Jamie Winkup when he was told that he had his first infringement, later on in the race, that becomes important. You can drive the car straight through the chicane and you've got genuine car speed. So if you need to make a pass or you need to make some time up, late in the race, those curb strikes will be very important. Dean Fiori on maximum attack at the moment, car 12. He's got Carl Reindler in front of him. Wink up, leads the way. And just as we go to the break, Courtney's reporting a big vibration in the rear of the Holden Racing Team car. It's Wink up by a margin of just underneath two seconds at the moment. Tanda's got a great battle going with Winterbottom. Lap 19, and here's James Moffat's Norton Ford. Remember that Dick Johnson Racing are running four cars from their workshop this year. To the lane. Here is another of them, Steve Owen, VIP Pet Foods Falcon 17. This is a triple eight built car, but has been driven for the last few years by Jonathan Webb in Mother Colours. It's moved into, well, back in the DJR workshop. It, it came from there a couple of years ago when it was run as a third DJR car, so it's a bit of a return. Steve's been an endurance driver there in years gone by. We cut that time 22 1, two seconds clear. Tanda, still the fastest man on the road. Fair bit of radio chat between Winkup and Mark Dutton. It's been a bit hard to understand in the last few laps. Winkup reported something that was getting worse. It was hard to tell what it was though. It's not affecting the pace. He's the fastest man on the road. Russell Ingle here, super cheap auto Commodore, 15. Todd Kelly, just behind him, 16. Todd yesterday finished eighth, but of course had a a run in with Craig Lowndes that sent him spinning at turn nine. He's being told by engineer Brendan Hogan that they've got five laps to go before car seven is in the lane. It's 
20 laps in the books now for Wing Cup. 58 to go, he's pulling away. The margin's 2.3 seconds. That's a static top 10. Tanda, Winterbottom, Will Davison, Lowndes, Rick Kelly, Slade, Holdsworth, Van Gisbergen and Reynolds. We're looking at that group here, seventh to 10. Coulthard's 11th, Delberto's 12th. Stephen Johnson, 13th, up from 16th on the grid. Bright's 14th. We're very much now settled down in a rhythm. The first round of pit stops not too far away. Remember that only one driver, Michael Patrizzi, decided to pit off sequence back on lap 13. So he'll be out of step with the rest of the field. Looking at Dave Reynolds, Bonolo Ford. That's where he crashed yesterday. This is the car that pulled umbrellas driven for the last couple of years. A little strange not seeing Paul around the paddock. He's been a regular member of it for nearly a decade in this championship. He'll be back at Sandown later in the evening. He'll team up with Jamie Winkup in car number one. This car, Triple Eight with Craig Lowndes, is heading to the lane. So the first of the main runners is in for pit stop number one. 5th in the race. Oh. It's lap 22 for the leaders. Team Vodafone go to work. They've got the time ready for Jamie Winkup when he comes in. That's Craig Lowndes leaving pit lane, so Team Vodafone have played the first card in terms of strategy. Lowndes did 21 laps, so the leader's now on lap 22, so he has been fueled up and ready to rumble. And they've brought him in uh, five laps earlier than they did yesterday. Been a very different start to the race and different rhythm, but we had that safety car intervention yesterday at lap six for a couple of laps as a result of all that incident and all that drama going on at turn eight is the Isolet car being driven by Taz Douglas. He's got a good arm wrestle going with Dean Fiori at the moment. Where are those guys? They're down in 19th, 18th and 19th at the moment. Consider that the car in the foreground was absolutely total. It's an all-nighter from that crew. Lucas Dumbrell racing and Isolet to be able to get the car up again on its wheels today and he's going very well. So Dean Fiore, he's got past the last time we checked in, he was uh, having a look at Carl Reimler, so he's got past Carl. And in comes Tim Slade. Remember that this is the crew and the car where you see two different crews in service. It's a little arrangement between Stone Brothers and Ford Performance Racing, part of the crews from Stone Brothers, the green part of the crews from Bottolo Racing. Fierce competitors on the racetrack, cooperation when it comes to the servicing aspects because of the limited pit space and the number of booms available. So good, simple, straightforward servicing there for Tim Slade. And uh, he's in a little earlier than corresponding time for yesterday. Great replay of Mark Winterbottom. Oof, oh. That's got to be pretty close to... Uh, a strike against his name, but it didn't actually trigger the computer, but he managed to get plenty of air under that thing. It must have been very close. Remember Jason Bright, qualified 15th. He's up to 12th now. The car was absolutely mangled after big contact. He arrived at the scene yesterday after James Courtney and Taz Douglas had gone in. It was such a heavy hit. Sore shoulder for Brighty, but he's punching on today, Larko. So uh, he's 12th at the moment behind Brighton in front of Todd Kelly. 
same colours but a completely different regime. And, uh, he's going pretty well at the moment, so he'll be happy with that. He's a very good point-to-point -point racer, Russell. He'll openly admit that qualifying's not his forte, but to get the thing between the flags, he's one of the fastest guys, and uh, he's pretty happy in there at the moment with the behaviour of this car. So midfield, that'll give you something to fight with. So at the pointy end, there's Wink Cup, Tanda, Winterbottom. And Tanda now in the pits. Will Davis and Lee Holdsworth, Shane Van Gisberg and Dave Reynolds, Fabian Coulthard, Tony D'Alberto and Steve Johnson. That's your top ten. And the flurry of pit stops are about to happen. Van Gisberg is also in behind Tanda. Stephen Johnson also in the lane. Oh. And that's Shane Van Gisbergen. And that's really clever because there's, there's no confusion when it's like that. There's only one or two other cars in the lane, but now look at it. It's starting to get busy. Now remember, they don't have the same fuel range at the start of the race because through the reconnaissance and the formation lap, you burn a little bit of fuel. So Mark Larkham talked about there being 27 odd laps. Right now they're getting about 25. Wind Cup's going to be in any tick of the clock as well. There's a problem there with Todd Kelly's car. We're monitoring their radio, so left rear is tardy on that car. They're changing the wheel nut. Oh, gee, that was close. Carl Ryan, or I think that was. Just put another another tyre on. That's what they've got. They've got another tyre now. Yeah, don't worry about yeah. trying to pluck the other. That means getting around that crew. Fuel for Dunlop tyres and a top up of water for the water brakes and sometimes for the driver as well. So all this means that Mark Winterbottom is now ahead of the field. Where's Tanda? Where's Tanda? Here he comes. There he is. So it all pretty much stays as is. They were very efficient stops from both crews. There's Tanda. Ah, it was yeah, so it's a long way. Yeah. Garth gave those curves a massive whack. So that was Courtney. Here we go up the inside. So that's the difference between cold tyres and warm tyres. And there's James Courtney. He was reporting dramas with that car. He's hustling along there at the moment. He's putting a fair bit of pressure on Wink Cup, isn't he? <laughs> it's all over him. So the order is this, Mark Winterbottom. Leading from Lee Holdsworth. David Reynolds just got another strike against his name for curve hopping. Now, Winterbottom's in. So again, we're seeing good fuel range from the Ford Performance Racing cars. And uh, Courtney's actually looking like he wants to argue the point down the inside. So clearly... Uh, He's in a completely different zone at the moment after a tough day yesterday. Here's Frosty. Okay, the rear wheels are done. Okay, Johnny, out of the way. No, no, rear wheels are done. Rear wheels are done, man. Rear wheels are done. We're going to have a clearing. Just go, 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 go. And remember, Courtney started from the pit lane, so he's got a couple of extra litres of fuel in that car, and he's yet to stop. So he's got to come out of this sequence. Now the gap's opened up between he and uh, Jamie Wincup. This will give James a good understanding of where the strengths and weaknesses lie between his car and Jamie. Oh, look oh, at that. Team teammates. <laughs> that was a lunge from Davison, wasn't it? It was a good pass. Because he, he knew he had to do that. So that's a change of position for the teammates. Winterbottom was in front of Davison before the pit stops. And post the pit stops, Davison gets down the inside. Craig Lowndes now looks very racy behind Winterbottom, who's just come out of the pit. Our race leader is David Reynolds, but not for long. They've just called him to the garage as well. So fuel going in for the Botlo car. And that will then reveal Jamie Whitcup back in the lead. And this is Wink, uh, sorry, Whitcup oh, got another strike when he came out of the pit. So that was Tander ar arriving. What's your DC? This is Carl Ryan on leaving the pits. Yeah. They've got a slide hammer there. I think they're trying to actually pluck one of those aluminium wheel nuts out of the, the rim and check that out. The air that he's got two strikes against his name now, Jamie Wincup. He's eaten into that 
credit bank far more in the early part of today's race than yesterday's. Partially intercepted a message from Wincup who says that there's something going on. He's not happy about a sound in his car, so we're just going to monitor it. Mark Larkham's making his way down there. Let's listen. Center to go up at the next stop, so he's not happy with the handling. He didn't confirm that he knows that he's got the two strikes. The radio comms can be pretty scratchy around here with all the buildings and the trees and the power lines, so though it's easy for us. So that's to try and get some turn in the front of the car. So what J-Dub's asking for is a change in the geometry of the car in the next stop to lift the rear roll centre and give him more turn. Mark Dutton's saying we can achieve it a different way by changing the front anti-roll bar. And there goes the adjustment, one click right on cue. Not surprisingly, Crompo, he didn't answer first up when Mark turn Dutton eight. checked in because he was at turn eight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark, I can't talk to you right now. I'm not breathing. <laughs> Very good point, man. That's exactly what happens. So what the net effect of this is for Wing Cup, when you bring the front roll bar down, it effectively softens the front of the car. And as Neil said, it helps the initial turn, but it also helps the inside front wheel locking. It doesn't stiffen uh, the, the total front axle. Craig has the same popping thing, mate. It's not terminal at this stage, so eyes forward. Let's pretend it's not there. Okay, I know what it is. Yeah. It's that overrun sound that you get on the trail throttle where it sounds like they're running on. So they may have done something overnight with the engine, the ECU, the engine mapping. They've had a fiddle, perhaps trimmed some fuel out of it one way or another. They're all in search of a combination of both power and economy. So maybe they've had a little tweak and the drivers are noting here a change in the vibe, the feel, the sound of the car. And the great thing about, I mean, we, we've spoken about Wing Cup's performance, but a lot of Jamie's performance is about the relationship with the engineer. And Mark Dutton talks to him very well. He keeps him informed, but he treats him the right way with it. He, he, he mentors him, he keeps him calm. He does a really good job of that through the course of these races. Both of these guys who are watching right now, driving Holden's last year, Lee Holtzworth and David Reynolds. Now Lee's behind the car of the Irwin Tools Falcon. And Davey's got the Bottolo entry vacated by Paul Dumbrell and Reynolds. Well, his career at uh, Ford Performance Racing Stable and Ford didn't start well yesterday because he went into the fence down at Turn 8, but now he's really fighting back here. He's having a good battle with Lee Holdsworth. They're at the top 10 stage of this race, so Lee is 9th and David currently 10th. The big question is, what about Jamie Winkup? Are there big troubles in the Team Vodafone car? Mark Winterbottom setting faster sectors of the race so far. He's fourth on the road. He's behind his teammate, Will Davison, who leapfrogged him through the pit stop cycle on board with David Reynolds, P10. Bottolo 55 Ford, prepared by Ford Performance Racing, but the wreck, the racing entitlements contract that runs that car is owned by Rod Nash. This is Patrizzi, he's 11th. Remember, he stopped early though. Coulthard slicing past in the Lockwood Commodore. That's for 11th spot. Patrizzi back to 12. Remember, just the one Techno Commodore in the field in this race. With Jonathan Webb sideline here in a qualifying crash. Winterbottom, new fastest lap. 121.82, just in the background of shot. There he is, the blue number five. Wink ups margins, 1.4 seconds to Tanda. Looking back at his former teammate, they shared a Bathurst win in 2009. these 
90 degree lefts and rights and now onto the rock straight, the run to turn eight. That's fast, right to the concrete on the exit. Radio message from Mark Dutton to Jamie Winkup. He's asking Jamie to switch to field position three for a couple of laps to see what sort of times they can generate. While they're running on that setting, here's Tander, who we were just riding with. As he continues the chase, the FPR cars are lined up three and four. Lap 32. A bit further back in the order, this is James Courtney, 17. Steve Owen, the VIP Petrus Ford in front. One driver in the field on three strikes for the curbs. Taz Douglas, 23rd. One more and that'll be a pit lane penalty. But it's the leader, Jamie Winkup, by 1.5 seconds. He has two curb hops at the moment. Welcome back to the Clipsal 500. Let's uh, run you through the highlights up to this stage of the race from the start. Another perfect start by Garth Tander to take the advantage into turn one from the pole sitter. Jamie Winkup, good effort too from Will Davis and Michael Caruso. On the first lap, now he's been trying to work his way back through the field. Look at this. He got the mirror, but he managed to avoid touching the wall too heavily. Winkup down there at turn eight. And then he finally gets the lead back at turn nine. A really deep move. Big issues for Team Norton. Power steering problem for young James Moffat. And Todd Kelly, well, his crew almost got wiped out there in pit lane, but uh, had a wheel nut problem in his pit stop. Jamie Winkup is the leader of the race by 1.4 seconds over Garth Tander. Will Davison is third. And over the course of the last five or so laps, Mark Winterbottom has been the fastest guy out there. He's currently in fourth. Watching James Courtney here at the moment. Steve's joined the Holden Racing Team as its managing director, and he's one of the many international men of mystery that are part of the championship these days because there's a raft of them. Tony Dow, 
who was involved with Tom Walkinshaw and Ligier in Formula One. This Patrizzi just whacking that kerb on the inside. Done a lot of guard and front end damage on that car by the look of it. Tony Dow's down there as performance director also for Kelly's at Jack Daniels Racing. Bruce Jenkins, ex-McLaren, he's in the bunker for Steve Webb's outfit at Techno Autosport. Here's another shot, the slow-mo replay. Wouldn't want to grow up and be that tyre belt down there in front of the tyre bundle at Turn 1, would you? Adrian Burgess, he's ex-McLaren and he's uh, obviously in the bunker down at Team Vodafone. Tim Edwards has come from Jordan. This is Tony Delberto. Chris Clark is ex-McLaren. He's at Brad Jones Racing. Pierre Luigi Orsi has been with Red Bull at Fujitsu Racing. I and mean, more and more, we're seeing more people come from around the world of motorsport from a high level of road racing in open wheel sports car and touring car and helping to organise these larger structures in V8 supercar racing. And there's quite a number of people with an extraordinary pedigree. Looking down on our top four. We're all trying to round up Jamie Wincup. So Winterbottom has managed to tag along behind Will Davison. All these four guys showing pretty much the same speed at this stage of the race. It's, it's a wait and see moment. Everybody in pit lane will tell you there will be a safety car. Well, well, 35 laps only in. once. 2007 was the last yeah. time that there wasn't a safety car. So, as Mark Larkham said at the start of the show, it is pretty much 95% certain. And if there's not a safety car in the world of fuel strategies, oh dear, it's going to be a mess. As we're watching Stephen Johnson, let's check in with Dick. So Stevie's in position 20, Dick. What's the what's the update first of all, mate, on James Moffat? Yeah, Steve was running really well before that. He was the first of your cars so he's just now in behind uh dean fiore the way that's rolling out now in 19th and 20th um what what about with uh james moffat's car dj is that over and out now Thanks, DJ. And Steve Owen in another of those cars, car number 49, VIP Pet Foods. He's running around at the moment in 17th. He got tangled up with Tim Slade yesterday, but was running pretty strongly. So here's the leaderboard, boy. It's tight at the top, and Tander, if anything, looks like he's found something, maybe the incoming tyre set, been repressured slightly, or he's found a better balance with his bars, but he's got a pep in his step. He took four tenths of a second away from Win Cup in the last lap. 22.2 was the lap time for Garth. It's amazing how it seesaws, isn't it? Look at these top four guys. They are in an elite class for laps of it at the moment. They've dropped Lowndes off slightly. Lowndes doesn't quite have the pace. He's been complaining a little about the car. So it's these four guys locked in combat. And Garth will want to return the favour. and does down the inside. Has a big dive at Winkup. We heard Winkup has gone back to setting three for fuel economy. So a bit of lap speed, but he's gone. There's something wrong with Jamie's car there. So, well, Will Davison goes by down to turn 11. He gets out of the way and Winterbottom goes by. This will be Wink Cup into the pits. So something amiss. Oh, no, he, stay, he stays out. Someone's uh, Would have been Will. left. I think it was Will Davison, the car in front. Well, Will was at the same time as we were looking at all this. Will was talking about something wrong with his power steering. So there's a series of guys out there at the moment who are just not happy. What on earth is going on with Wind Cup? There's been radio silence. That is very strange. I thought for sure he would be straight into the pit. So this will be on for young and old in this, this chat now there. Adrian Burr just talking to Mark Dutton. No chat back to Jamie Wind Cup. We've heard absolute silence, as Neil said. Normally under this scenario, they'd be chatter both ways so he's gone from first to fourth in a blink now it all started here so Tanda decided to make the move 
Okay, so there appears to be no problem. Well, the last thing that I heard of any significance was go back to trim three on the mixture setting, which is the, the leanest setting that they can run, more air, less fuel, before you go to the safety car setting where you're just dribbling around the racetrack. Um, everything else after that's just been fluff. You know, keep your eyes forward and look. And the, you obviously heard that communique then. Jamie left a ton of space down at turn nine. Just listen. Just listen. It's only on half throttle. It's only on half throttle just there. Just listen again on the way out of here. And it's, it, it did have a bit of a miss. But you hear a lot of pickup. Yeah. That's because he's offline. The pickup is the hot tyres. He's grabbing bits of molten rubber off the road and flicking it up in the guard. I wonder whether he just got a... It's not uncommon around here to get a bit of garbage on tyres and have a bad lap. That was a strike against Gar Tander's name. Through there at turns one and two. Yeah, that was all that was unusual. So there's plenty of chat here. That's Roland Dane talking to Mark, Mark Dutton. Mystery well done, deepens, Larko. The net result is Garth Tanner is now the race leader from Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom on lap 40. Great shot there of Steve Owen. The VIP Pet Foods former on board with Garth Tanner. He is the new race leader. Turn eight, looking back at Will Davison. Winkup is fourth and his pace has recovered. It's now the same as the top three. Lowndes, Rick Kelly, Van Gisberg and Slade, Holdsworth and Reynolds. Just the top ten jumping back on board with car five. Mark Kinnabon at the helm. This is the end of lap 40. Center is Todd Kelly. He's about to go down a lap. He's 25th in the Jack Daniels Commodore. Remember that he lost massive amounts of time earlier with that wheel nut drama. And he's going to yield, get out of the way, does the right thing, and lets the leaders go through. And they're talking to Winkup. They're asking him to change the trims for the fuel setting. They're going up and down the register. They've been at three. Sounds like they've gone back to one now. But this is the fight for the lead. It's on. Works Holden. Works Ford. Classic stuff. Tanner v. Davison. And Will is closing in. He's got a great run to turn eight. Shows the nose. That's the setup. Turn nine's where he really wants to get it done. Tanner just moves across, covers his old teammate, and Will locks it up. Slows him down, gives Winterbottom a run. And Tanda gets a little bit of breathing room. We saw the two factory forts trip one another over at Simmons Plains last year. Brains Trust, Campbell Little to the left, engineer for car five. Matt Nielsen, engineering manager in the middle. And Grant McPherson is calling the shots for Will Davison. 23-0 for Tanner, 23-4 for Davison, 23-1 for Winterbottom and 22-8 for Winter.
Remember, Wing Cup has two curb strikes, one for Tanda, one for Winterbottom, and one for Lowndes. Outside the 10, it's Kultan 11, it's Alberto 12. English 13th from 21st on the grid. Bright's next, James Courtney's worked his way through. 11, he's up to 15 from 26th. Remember, he's down for the lane, in fact, as well. It's a real arm wrestle at the front. Winkup's losing a little bit of time to the three on screen. There's 24 cars left on the lead lap. The last of them is Michael Caruso in the Fujitsu number 34 car. He's about 10 seconds in front of Garth Tander on the road as it sits. This is the end of lap 42. We're past the halfway mark here at the Clipsal 500 on this race day Sunday, and that's your top three from the Coats Hire Chopper. Garth Tander leads. Will Davison has good pace and had a crack at Garth during the ad break, but couldn't get it done at turn nine. Mark Winterbottom's also got good pace as well. And this is the crack that I was talking about. Has a look, decides not to, locks it up. Well, Garth away. moved over, Matt. That he was actually really committed. You can see there, Garth moves over and Will tries to avoid running into the back of the Toll HRT car. So he's still, still moving, still moving, still moving. And in the end, he had to go left or he was going to spear him. So that was actually a good bit of driving from Will Davis. He released the brake pedal and flicked left. So Garth, a little cheeky when you move it over like that in the braking area and the guy's already made a commitment. You, you can't do anything about this 1,500 kilo thing that's arrowing down the road. Jason Bright sitting in 14th and going well too. Remember, he had that huge whack in race one yesterday at turn eight. Uh, they're reporting that he's fine. He didn't need the pain-killing injection in his shoulder. He's had just some anti-inflammatories and uh, reporting that he is comfortable. And that's Phil Keaty's engineer just offering some advice on the setting for the rear anti-roll bar. And now the front bar, so they're fiddling around trying to get a balance. He's battling with Courtney, 14th and 15th. Up front, when we come out of that break, and you made reference to the battling group. Matty, this is a great race. These are the best guys, and it's who's going to blink first. Here comes Courtney down the inside of Bright. Looked, had a think, just couldn't get it done. They're both at their braking maximum. There's not another millimetre of braking performance and tyre grip left in those cars. It's not as simple as I'll, I'll just go down there. Brake too late, you lock the brake. Brake too early, you don't pass anybody. Jason Bright, a winner here back in 2001 when he was at HRT. Now, yeah, Team BRC, of course, and James Courtney's pushing on big time. Started from pit lane, up in the 15th. Mark Dutton has just said to Jamie Winkup, trim four, and must, must be using a safety car setting today. Trim four, we're losing too much time. So do you want to go back to trim three and just try lifting, meaning fanning the throttle off a little bit more. So, and they're losing pace to the leaders. So they've suddenly found themselves in an awkward position in fuel economy land. So the question mark that jumps up in my mind is what changed overnight? Shane Van Gisbergen has been nice and quiet, steady as she goes today. Seventh, start at ninth. Here's Tim Slade, had really good bursts of speed. But like the man in front of him, is, is maintaining the rage, if you like. Keeping inside the top ten, keeping it off the walls, keeping it straight. Doing a good, solid job. Brand Spanker, that car. The other new car, brand new one, was Jonathan Webbs. It looks pretty second-hand at the moment after that big incident, the scary one in qualifying this morning. David Wall, Wilson Security. He's got uh, five, maybe six laps remaining in this fuel stint for the leader if they go right to virtually bone dry. David Wall's had great success and experience in GT Championship Racing in Australia and also in Carrera Cup. He's had a bit of a dabble here and there in V8 supercars, but now he's in the main game. His dad was a really accomplished sports van driver out of Sydney, and uh, young David Big step up from the development series to be in the main game this year. So we're 
heading towards that critical mark for the next round of pit stops. Wing Cup's got troubles. Tanda leads the way. Will Davison chasing him down. Back on board with Will Davison. Half a second ahead. Gar Tanda, race leader. 45 laps down, 33 to go. That distinct FPR Falcon note. That diagonal windscreen bar that runs through this car. You won't see that next year in the new car of the future. It won't be a, a feature of the new spec cars. It's been around for V8s for about a decade now. It's been nicknamed the Larry Bar because Larry Perkins was the first one to run one in the car and then every fo everybody followed suit. Look at that, 239 k's before he gets there. He's still doing 215. Through turn eight. Now down the sequential gearbox. Bang, bang, bang. Second gear. Slowest corner. 60 k's. Road car speed. second that time around to these three. He's falling back into the clutches of Craig Lowndes, his teammate. And pressure is on. The Holden hero is under the gun from two of the Fords. The weight of the numbers this year is 17 Holdens and 11 Fords in the 28 car V8 supercar field. It's further down the road. them yet. But Davison's just gained all that ground back that he lost a few laps ago when he had a lunge here at turn nine. In fact, he's going to have a go this time. He's down the inside and Garth's got it on the rear brake. He can't stop him. And we have a change of the lead. Winterbottom's going through as well. It's a one-two for FPR. Tander back to third. Davison to the lead at the Clipsal 500. That's Chaz Mostert to the left. He's dominated the Dunlop series this weekend. Won both races for FPR. Just finishing lap 47, Alistair McVeigh, race engineer for Garth Tander. But Will Davison, can he build a margin here? What sort of speed does the trading post board have? 22 8 that time. The Ford fans welcome him in the lead at the chicane. 31 to go. Davison of the top five is the only one without a curb strike. So he's got a few in the bank up his sleeve for later in the day if he needs them. Let's see if the factory Fords can pull away from the HRT Commodore. Lap 48 of the Clipsal 500. Welcome back. Check this out. Garth Tander under attack from Will Davison. And we have a new race leader. Davison gets oh. it done and only just at turn nine. It wasn't as pretty. And then also Mark Winterbottom joins in the hunt. So Garth goes from first to third in the blink of an eye. Ford Performance Racing trying to close in on their first win at the Clipsal 500. Will Davison is still searching for his first win as part of this team. And funnily enough, his last career victory came with the man who he just overtook for first place back in 2009. They were teammates at Bathurst. And there was a little touch, a tiny little kiss right front to left rear, Garth Tanda to Will Davison. And Garth got on the phone straight away and said, oh, I'm not sure about the steer. It might have been an emotional reaction rather than a technical one. Here it is. Wow, he only just got it stopped, Will. It, there it is. It. Bam. That's the little kiss that I spoke of. And actually, it's bigger when you see it from that angle than I thought. So Garth, he's the one in the driver's seat. He can feel it. He probably didn't like the vibe. So Tim Slade in now for a critical stop. This is 
basically at the threshold. Get ready here, get ready, get ready. Similar to what we saw yesterday in terms of how you can make it home. Yeah, so. That's really interesting. So we just heard from the team, we're a couple of laps shy of making it here. The critical number that Larko spoke about at the top of the show, the Dick Smith Tech Centre was 48. Stone Brothers have just told us that's not quite right. You need a little bit of luck, a bit of fuel management, rolling out of the throttle, trimming it down. In terms of the fuel mixture, maybe a safety car to help you get home from that point. So this again is going to be a big discussion about fuel economy and management at the back end of this race, unless we get a safety car. You saw the probability numbers of that at the top of the program. They're extremely high here. In now, Craig Lowndes from position five. Hasn't been a happy stint for Lowndes. So on our calculations, we think Lowndes has got the best economy in the field at the moment. So he'll be able to get home from here. We've already just heard there Slade going to battle to get home. Two laps is the margin there for Slade. So on all our numbers, this should get Lowndes home. We said in the break that Will Davison... That, ooh, a little stall there for Craig, got away with it. And he used the, the uh, anti-stall. Yeah, the anti-stall, the auto start, the car went. When they stall like that, both feet to the floor, clutch and accelerator, boom, she restarts. They can program the electronics in the car. He doesn't have to dip the clutch, find the starter button, both pedals to the floor, get the fire started once again, and away he goes. We said in the break about Will Davison, he needed to make that pass on tandem. That's a very important moment for Will Davison's campaign this year. He was right behind him. Garth moved across on him. They almost had contact a couple of laps earlier. We saw that vision, and then the very desperate pass as Wink Cup's in now. A desperate pass by Davison. Rear wheels locked up down the inside. Great job. This means a lot to him today. to get them away. Just, if you use too much throttle, the cars just sneeze when they've got the pit lane speed limiter engaged and they'll just stop cold on you. It's only a 40 kilometre an hour electronic limit. The temptation, human temptation here is to stamp on the throttle and go for big percentage. That's your instinctive reaction. And the danger now, Neil, based on what we've just seen, is the Vodafone guys are fueled to the end now. Now you've got to, you've got to organise yourself to know who you're racing because if you can get home, You've got to bring the FPR cars in now because if a safety car comes out, you smash. Trapped. Exactly. Well, there, you go. there you go. On cue. So here comes Will Davison, the race leader. He had a 1.7 second margin as he peeled off. Tanda goes with him for the Holden Racing Team. Isn't that a great shot? Critical stop. Oh, man, that was close. They didn't tell him either. No. That was really close. That could have ended that race. I thought it was going to be contact. Oh, that was nothing in it, Neil. Absolutely nothing between Van Gisbergen and Davison. Wow, that was close. So Tanda gets out. I think he lost a little bit of ground versus... Uh, Will Davison stop, so good stop there by FPR, and here's Winkup. Now we also there's have Lance. Jamie asked for a rear roll set of change, which Dutto confirmed that they were making, so look to see whether Jamie's been happy with the car balance in this stint. They'll have done something, I didn't intercept the message, but I'm sure they'll have probably either repressured some tyres for Craig, or maybe given him a little chassis tweak as well. He typically comes on strong at the end of these races, he just wasn't happy about this uh, misfire. I don't well, think in fact it was a misfire in the engine, but... It, Oh, that's so close. Just wiped across the rear bumper, didn't he? So Craig was just unhappy and complaining early. Here it is from another angle. How does he miss? That was a feeler gauge, that one. It was a pop.
hopping or an overrun or a banging that he wasn't happy with. We'll see what it's like for this final stint. This is Mark Winterbottom. He was the leader of the race. Bit of in the radio. Just be quick about it, though. Quick about it. What I love about the Team Vodafone stops is that air traffic control style, we're in control, here's some authority, this is what we're doing. Let's just wait one moment and get that right rear sorted. A few of the teams need to take a bit of the screaming away and just go back to a bit of low stress. That's wild because whatever that fluid was, you see what it did to, the, to Tanda's car? I don't know whether it was water or fuel, I think it was water. Still coming out. Still coming out. And Tanda was sideways with that lubricant or whatever it is. There's definitely fluid coming out of the right hand side. We saw it in turn one. Sometimes there's a bit of an overfill and a spill from the water when they try and top up the tanks for the water breaks. We've seen it before. And, uh... Tanda, you watch. Tanda arrives. And he is sideways, so here's the fluid coming out of car five. And then in the background, we get another shot in a sec of Tanda. Have a look at this. Oh! <laughs> right out, speedway style. Now, he got a hop yeah, he because of that. Exactly. Yeah, man, and just to explain what Mark's saying there, he had to clear the curb and go straight across the top, so he gets a black mark against his name for an infringement on the sensors. Doesn't always hit it sideways again. It again. The funny thing about um, there are different people in this paddock who have a different view about water than I do. In my opinion, it's a fluid, and it's no different to petrol or oil, and it needs to be better controlled. There's a lot of teams over the years that have had fluid coming out of their cars, notably water, and uh, everyone turns a blind eye. But I, for my money, it's a fluid. If it leaks, and if it persistently leaks, it needs to be dealt with pretty harsh. I agree. David Moore, by the way, has now got four strikes at the curb, so he's going to come through the pit lane. He'll come through away from his mates in the pit lane. <laughs> yeah, Neil just put a full stop on that. That fluid you're seeing is water for the water breaks, and it used to wax it up higher, and you'd see it, and it used to spray the guy that was filling it up. So they put the exit down in the B-pillar right down low there, so it's obviously filled up in the doors and the sill there has come out. So, uh, I mean, if you look on the pit lane, every time everyone does it now, they leave a big dump of water in the lane here as well. I reckon they've got to jump on it. I'm with you on that, mate. Yeah, I don't know. You can see the patches in the pit lane, even from the shot we've got of James Courtney at the moment. There's just giant puddles where everybody does their thing. You see a heap of it get deposited on the track. I think there was a bit of a kerfuffle a few years ago. I remember commenting on a Queensland raceway. And, uh, anyway, something for uh, those that read every line in the operations manual to arm wrestle over at midweek. I love it when you just sort of resign yourself to not being able to fix the issue. Oh, it's dumb. It's, you, they leak water. Right, here we go. It shouldn't happen. It's dumb. It's How was that? How was that? I'm you're busy fishing. Are we fishing? You, you, didn't need, you didn't need any bait. You just put the hook in front of him. And he's towing the boat backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so James Courtney tucked in behind Russell Ingle, the 13th and 14th, as we ride here with Will Davison. Our race leader from Mark Winterbottom, his teammate, then Garth Tanner, Jamie Wincup, his fourth, Craig Lowndes, fifth, then Rick Kelly, Shane Van Gisbergen, Tim Slade, Lee Holdsworth and David Reynolds make up our top ten. Stay on board here and listen to a great lap around this racetrack. Keeps the momentum up with the car. The FPR car has 
very good mid-corner grip. We often say it about the way the engineering groups achieve the speed. And although the regulations are the same for everybody, some teams and drivers do small things differently to effectively come up with uh, the, the benchmark or the, or the style of car that they're looking for. And FPR, the way that they get around the middle of the corner, so places like the middle of turn eight, the middle of turn one, turn two, they're very strong in that area. And that's why he was able to stay close enough to Garth Tander through turn eight to make that pass stick. So very impressive. And when you watch him just then, he was flowing the car really nicely, looking after the tire and making the car achieve its speed, almost coaxing it to go fast. Well done, Marco. That's exactly what the issue is. And there's a different issue from yesterday because the Vodafone cars were fast and they qualified very well again. Obviously, we come on pole position. But definitely from yesterday, they had good economy, good enough economy to have won the race. And Wincup and Lounge today don't look like they're as good. And the changes that have been made clearly aren't as good today. No. Tail shaft again, we understand, for James Courtney. Here's Fabian Coulthard. He's just outside the top 10 at the moment. He's got a little battle going here with Todd Kelly at present. Though uh, Todd's out of position here because he's a lap down. So uh, Fabian, 11th, is chasing David Reynolds just a little bit up the road. It's been a great opening campaign for the Lockwood car. Good. And uh, I spoke to Brad Jones about it earlier today and he said he's fitted in really well. Absolutely no stress. Car strolling along nicely. It's a great way to open the championship we can build from here. Position six yesterday and started from 14, so he's moving up through the field. Now, Mark Dutton's telling Jamie Wincup, great job with the fuel, great job with the fuel. So, sounds like a happier stint, a team Vodafone for their, both their guys at the moment. Taz Douglas, I select Holden Commodore. It's the orange one in the middle here. He's getting uh, attacked by David Reynolds. Reynolds is 10. Holdsworth, you can see in the foreground, he's 9. So there's still a few question marks lurking here about the way in which people are burning fuel in the final stint of the race, and here's our race leader. He's got a three and a half second margin over his teammate, Mark Winterbottom. And he was just blueing on the radio. Will Davison was saying, and even the guys in the garage were saying, there's no blue flag. So he was trying to get by one of the DJR cars. Steve Johnson. And it was, yeah, it was Steve. And, uh, and he was really, he was feral on the radio about it. He needed to get by and was clearly being held up. Now, Tanda looks racy at the moment. Tanda looks like he's just starting to claw back that margin. You can see him in the background there. It's a question of the big five here at the moment. You might even stretch that to Rick Kelly in sixth of the Jack Daniels car. But these top runners have been arm wrestling their way through this race. It's been going for one hour, 21 minutes and 15 seconds, and they are absolutely flat out. This is a massive contest technically and physically between these teams and these guys. You're right about Rick Kelly. He's been there or thereabouts. He's been in the mix from the word go. James Courtney takes the seat. Tail sharp problems is flared up in qualifying. That's surprising given that they had to piece that thing back together after yesterday. Okay, so this was Dean Fiore. We gave you a bum steer there. It was Dean Fiore, not Stevie Johnson, that Will Davison was trying to get past and eventually does so. And he was and yelling, no blue flags, no blue flags, this is it. Well, it, it did chop into his lead time because at this stage he had about four and a half second lead over his teammate Mark Winterbottom. It's now been uh, chopped down to about three and a half. So all that hassle and 
All that hard work to get past the car in front of you ends up costing him about a second. And he's yet to have a strike against his name, so he's a, he's a clean skin. He's got three up, up his sleeve if he needs to attack them at the back end of this race. So Garth Tander has had that curb hop removed from the circumstance with the water. Oh, so he got, he's gone to two and he's back to one. So that's a good, good decision there by race officials. Very good. And that would have been as a result of correspondence with the team. They would have pointed it out. Driving standards observer and the investigating officer and everybody involved back in race control. They'd have gone back and looked at the tape. Had a bit of a look at the spare call. So that's, a, that's where the system works well. Here we go now. Mark Winterbottom up against the back of Dean Fiore. He'll also be looking for clean passage to try and keep this buffer. It's just slowly diminishing to Garth Tanner. That's the lurking hold in the background of the red. Tanner was just a whisker quicker on the last lap and that'll be as a result of traffic. These guys will be working very, very hard. Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom. NPR have never won on the streets of Adelaide. They're in front of Garth Tander, who's been so successful here. And a great pass before we made the comment about Will Davison. But when he got by, there was a little bit of contact, and Mark Winterbottom made the most of it also. So a lot of pressure on the factory Falcons. We're looking here at Lee Holdsworth. David Reynolds up the inside and just makes a little kissing contact there with Michael Caruso who got off to a bad start here at turn four at the beginning of the day, rotated and grabbed the wall. He was very quick in the initial stint after that in clear air and uh, Caruso at the moment is down in 22nd position. Go Gee, back on. That, doesn't he? You made the comment yesterday, yeah. he hits that curb so hard. It makes you flinch oh. because in the, if you're in the car, you, you and I know what that feeling is like through the through the entire body. It's a shock through the system and the curbs around here are brutal. And they've got to use them sometimes to make lap speed. So here's our race leader, Will Davison. has got nearly four seconds on Mark Winterbottom. I want to check these gaps visually for you here. So we'll hang back and have a look. There's Winterbottom in the blue car. Leader's coming up to Stevie Johnson. Here comes Tander. He's got him on the end of the rope, has he? He's dragging him in slowly. Win Cup's next in the queue. There he is and his teammate Lowndes is 15 seconds covering the big five. And then, a couple of cars back, you can see Rick Kelly, Jack Daniels, and he's got his hands full at the moment because Shane Van Gisbergen is rattling on his bumper. Car 21's out of position, but 47, Tim Slade is eighth. David Reynolds, uh, sorry, Lee Holdsworth ninth, David Reynolds 10th. 11th is Coulthard, 12th is Dalberto. Here they are, well, here's Coulthard. This is giving you an idea of the fresh air gaps. Back to Tony. There he is now in 12th in the third entry of the Ford Performance Racing built Ford Falcon. G got off to a great start at the beginning of the weekend. Then Russell Ingle, super cheap auto racing, midfield, 13th at the moment. Another air gap back to Stevie Owen. Really stretched out, aren't they? Can you, you believe? 62, exactly 62 laps into a 78 lap. 250 kilometer event around here and no safety cars so far. When we said it was 95% certain, Matt, we were 95% certain to say there wasn't <laughs> going to be one. <laughs> Must be Matt. <laughs> These guys have had a pretty good battle. Lee Holdsworth and uh, David Reynolds. <laughs> they haven't been able to venture further up the list. They've been too busy fighting each other off. I love the contest going on at Stone Brothers at the moment. All three cars painted differently, three different guys at the helm. All have different styles, different engineers and engineering techniques. Van Gisbergen has got the upper hand in that little group at the moment, he's seventh. Then Tim Slade is eighth, then Lee Holdsworth is ninth. 3.6 seconds is the margin between Will Davison and his teammate Mark Winterbottom. And they are five seconds up the road. That is the leader to third place. Garth Tander, the first of the Holdens. Some ripper, super slow-mo action here in Adelaide. Lap 63. That's James Small, race engineer for David Reynolds with the 55 bottle of Ford. And uniquely, these two, driver and engineer, used to be 
teammates, as drivers. Back in the days of Formula 4, we know, coming up through the ranks. This is the fight for sixth. Rick Kelly, Shane Van Gisbergen. Will Davison's margin is 3.6 seconds back to Mark Winterbottom. Tan is another 2.3 seconds down the road. And Link up to another 7 seconds further back. He's 12.7 down on the man that he beat yesterday, Will Davison. Another strong day for Stone Brothers Racing. Three cars in the top ten, just as FBR have done. Team Vodafone with two in the top ten. Singles from Jack Daniels Racing and the Holden Racing Team. Davis in that time just set his fastest lap of the race, 21.92. Built the margin on winner bottom. Looking down at Rick Kelly, Clipsal champion in 2007. Van Gisbergen in the SP Tools Ford. Best finish here was fourth on Sunday two years ago. Coming up here on the Fairdink of Sheds car, Carl Ryan, the car 11, 20th and a lap down. One of four cars from Kelly Racing, so his teammates with Rick Kelly. No doubt we'll step aside right there on cue. And Davison's just sneaking away now. He's rebuilt the margin. He's got it back to where he had it before. A 4.3 seconds. Van Gisbergen with a run on Rick Kelly here. What's he got for turn nine? Oh, Rick right up against the fence. And the Kiwi will like the look of it. Looking, 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 not quite there. He'll file that away for the next time around. Remember that there's still four drivers in the top ten with two curb hops. Winterbottom, Winkup, Lowndes and Reynolds. And Van Gisberg is all over the back of the Jack Daniels Commodore. This time next year, it'll be a Nissan. The team moving next year when Car of the Future rules come in and Nissan join the championship. That time around, Davison 22.09, Winterbottom 22.5, Tanner 22.2, Wing Cup 22.3. Not much in at the moment, 16 cars are left on the lead lap. The last of them is Michael Patrizzi, and he's about to go down a lap to Will Davison. Here's Steve Owen, 14th. The VIP Pet Foods Ford, he's the best of the cars from Dick Johnson Racing. Johnson's 17th, Fiori's 18th. He's in the pit lane and out of the race. Jason Bright pushing on, 15th, and at least in the race. This time yesterday, this car was a mess. But it's Will Davison who leads. 64 laps down, 14 to run in race two at Clipsal. Inside the final 15 laps now of this 78 lap race. The most remarkable thing so far has been no safety car. We're looking at VIP Pet Foods entry of Steve Owen in 14th spot. He was pretty speedy yesterday, Matt, and he ended up in an incident. We saw him on one of our replays in our coverage yesterday of him being rotated, tangled up with Tim Slade. He got a whack and finished 18th. Remember, this is part of the amalgam, uh, the um, consolidated teams between Dick Johnson and Paul Morris Motorsport. So they've amalgamated their act, four cars, and of course it's a brand jump for Steve Owen from a Holden to a Ford. And wide now for Rick Kelly, and down the inside for Shane Van Gisbergen. So that's a position. So sixth and seventh they're arguing over, and uh, Rico drops, just drops back one there. Is our race leader. You see the front brakes yeah. on the front of the Holden. They're just absolutely glowing for Patrizzi. And a bit of damage on the front left corner. We saw that earlier in the day when he grabbed the tyre bundle down on the inside of the apex at turn one. Quite a few cars are pretty heavily scuffed in that regard. Michael now a lap back. So he goes a lap down as Will Davison leads this race with a three and a half second margin to Mark Winterbottom.
check this out. Focus on the inside of the rim on Michael's car. There you go, little glimpse of it. And uh, that is around about, so well, it depends. It's a little bit uh, different for each different competitor, but somewhere between eight and 900 degrees C. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, it's hot. So Jamie Winkup holding fire in fourth. The second segment of this race for him wasn't a pretty one. Same can be said for Craig Lowndes. It wasn't a happy stint. Started on pole position. We're trying to figure out why the popping noise. Searching and got it all back together, but doesn't have that pace to start attacking those in front of him. Now, David Reynolds, James Small, his engineer, told him you can go to full rich position one, but be careful of the curb hopping at turn two. So he's on the charge at the moment. He's got two strikes on his name at the curb at turn two, but... If he uh, keeps this sort of pace up at the moment, looks like he's going to climb over his teammate. <laughs> he got a good run, but he ended up too wide, so he's on the wrong side for turn eight. So he, he sort of did a good job in one way, and track positions caught him now, but he needs to get a good run, get a good run there. Maybe, maybe not quite. Lee goes across and covers, so this will make it hard. But he does look vulnerable. He looks like he's got car speed on Lee Holdsworth. Painted differently, but they're out of the same garage. David Reynolds in the green car, driving for Rod Nash Racing. So Slade just up the road. He's trying to hunt this. That's what I'm trying to talk about. 47 Slade and 55 David Reynolds, teammates. But these blokes here from opposing camps, but it's game on. But the weird thing is there's also that little collaboration that goes on the pit between these outfits, which is amazing between Stone Brothers and Port Performance Racing. But Davey looks racy at the moment. He was sideways there out of turn two, off the kerb. This is great vision. Just onto the limit of there. You can see Holdsworth a little bit wide at turn five. Now what he's got to do, he's got to organise himself to get out of turn seven and make sure that he can get through turn eight without too much effect from the car in front because it's a 215k corner. The aero effect takes grip from your car. So you've got to be able to get through here. Just have a listen. Oh, big slide. You can see there the car moving around on the exit. And Dave, about a car length and a half back too far to be able to make the pass we're talking about. And he, he hit the throttle very hard. He had a little hesitation in the brake that you do into turn eight. Then he worked it very hard, ground the curving as well. Because what he was thinking is, I want to run. I want, I want to run up the inside of nine. But it all got a bit exciting at the wrong time. Well, he was about. He was not far from doing the same thing as he did yesterday. What he was thinking was, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> it's right. This hurts he's, too much. He's been calling it my friend, Mr. Wall, down there at turn eight, taking photos of it during the parade laps and stuff and posting them on Twitter so he's trying to stay away from it as much as possible. He'll be glad when this next 10 laps are over. So they've got James Courtney back out again using this as a uh, test session now. So um, a little inter-team battle going on at Stone Brothers and the lead man in that pack remains Van Gisbergen. Here's our leader. Tim Slade is eighth and Lee Holdsworth is ninth. That's put Bright a lap down also in the pit stop. He couldn't change the right-hand rear tyre. So he's been heavily affected in this last segment of this race. You can see the car moving around. And again, that little bit of traffic's just eaten away at the lead that Will has over Mark Winterbottom, although Mark now finds himself in that same traffic. So we go back on board for Davey Reynolds. Back at the same place down here at Turn 8. Better run that time. This is a really intriguing battle, isn't it, between these guys? So. Holdsworth, who had a great, strong result yesterday. Good opening account for him. Just trying to position himself so that he's nice and awkwardly parked for David Reynolds. You can see Slade up ahead. He's battling for fuel, so his car speed's not good enough. So Lee Holdsworth is catching his teammate, Tim Slade. But behind him, Dave Reynolds has got better speed than the two cars in front. And he, of course, wants to get more in touch with the first two in the race. Davison and Winterbottom, they've got same cars essentially so this is a a great look at this precinct so you come out of that first chicane you go up any of the locals would know this is wakefield street at turn four this is a very bumpy section of braking and then you turn right and then you go through this series of sort of 80k 
right, then a left at turn five, then a, another 80k corner at turn six. And this now travels down to where the circuit was shortened many years ago. In Formula One, you used to go uh, left and right and keep on going straight down to the Stag Hotel. Now you come up this straight, and that's Dave Reynolds. Great run, a little missed gear there from Holdsworth and gets the job done up the inside into turn eight. So good, tenacious driving from Dave Reynolds. Oh, don't do that. He got by, he didn't need to fire it in the fence again. Goes across and covers. This is turn nine now, the slowest corner on the track. Wasn't that a great shot of how much the car gets unsettled when you clip that inside curve? Absolutely. And uh, I'd say that Lee couldn't get it out of second gear. When you leap off the curb on the exit of turn seven, uh, it's pretty short in the gearing there to grab third, and if it actually hits the hard cut, 7,500 revs, sometimes quite hard to get it out of gear, and it hesitates the car, and you've got to pull it through to third. Here we go on board. That's oh, real. <laughs> What's going on there? Got the crowd figure in, boys. 82,100 today, Fantastic. which was up on last year. So, 263,400 people have come through the gates to watch this event. So, I'm just going to unravel that in my head. David's changing gear with his left hand. He's bringing his right hand across from the right hand side of the steering wheel to the left hand side of the steering wheel to push a button. <laughs> it's pretty wild, wasn't it? This is the lab he got through. Wow. Look at the big slide at the end. <laughs> He's had. I mean, he's had a really a good first weekend. I, I would have said that this, you just listen for this. Ex oh, that's exactly what happened at Crompo. He nearly got him, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, didn't he? Almost give him a, a bump down that straight. So give him a little wave. <laughs> and then have a look here. And then he goes, oh, I better grab the wheel again. And that's because he turned into weight shallow, meaning he didn't have all the full width of the turn in from the appropriate racing line. So basically, you've got to make the corner tighter when you don't give yourself the space. It's working today, isn't it, Brett? And it's working in the one-two fashion as well. I like Tim's summation. <laughs> Don't crash. Don't crash. Well, especially with the Ford boss behind you. <laughs> right. It's great to see him here, actually. How's this? Will Davison, with seven laps to go, has just posted the fastest time to the second sector, so he's picking up speed. That would be the first thing you do. <laughs> so stop that. Do not do that again. He's got four seconds advantage over Winterbottom, Tander third. Some people have short memories, don't they? Don't they? Wasn't that long ago, was it? Okay. Well, you just don't need to go that fast. He's got 3.9 second lead over his teammate. Just back it off and drive it back to the gap. Look at Jack, this. Jack Brabham used to say that the best guys win the races by the smallest margins. Great pass there. Remember. Lee Holdsworth by his teammate. Yeah, remember, Tim's just hurting for economy at the moment. He's had to ease down the lap speed to try and contain the fuel burn, be able to get this thing to the end of the race. So that uh, little battle that's going on there is resolving in favour of Lee Holdsworth for the moment. Shane Van Gisbergen still first in the queue for Stone Brothers. So 3.9 seconds near enough between Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom with Garth Tander. There was that moment Well done, Brett. That's a great comment there from Bob Graziano. Clearly, the competition is what they're in this sport for. As we pick up on the factory, Falcon of Will Davison up on two wheels, and look at the way they ride. That unbelievably ag aggressive curb, and he still, through the whole race, has got no curb hops at that point there. That must be right on the threshold, that one. He's been a very good boy. <laughs> He's been a very good boy. <laughs> be a very good boy if he lasts another five laps. 
Now, Douglas and Kelly are 23rd and 24th in this field at the moment, but Fabian Coulthard still just knocking on the door outside the top 10. He's sitting in 11th in the Lockwood entry, had the lights on there just to politely suggest to the guys that he'd like to sneak up, and he did. So Kelly puts a move on the Lucas Dumbrell car for I select New backing for that team that they just pulled together going into the new season. New driver, new backing, and that's also a Triple Eight built car that Orange Car is looking out there at the moment. Margin just came down slightly between Davis and, and Winterbottom. We're getting yeah. towards the closing stages of this race. I was going to make the remark a moment ago before we went to Bob Scopey that the, the Tander challenge, which looked like he was kind of just dragging in millimetre at a time, has kind of gone out the other way again now. It's just eased off. He's 8.2 seconds behind Will Davison now, isn't he? So, and four and a half seconds behind Mark Winterbottom. So he hasn't been able to sustain the pace that you were talking about. And this is this great foot shot great force there into turn one. It's interesting and it's possibly to do with his sore ankle, but Frosty's not putting his foot back on the dead pedal on the left-hand side of the foot well. There's another rest that you can just see to the left of his foot. Normally a driver would return his foot back to the foot rest in order to be able to just brace himself, but it's probably not a good thing to put pressure on at the moment, so he's just sitting on the top of the clutch pedal there. Such an aggressive break, isn't it? When you see, that's one of the things, that when you see the difference between the right foot breakers and the left foot breakers, the aggression of the first application of the brake for a right foot breaker is very severe. And the left foot guys tend to change the pitch of the car more gradually, more softly, because it's more of a sort of a, a, an automatic style approach to driving the car. Let's just have a look when we go up now into with this little heel and toe back to second gear now at turn 11. Just have a look now up into the final complex. You go across this kerb, have a look at the car, it goes across this right kerb, and then just balances the brake there. You've seen so many cars over the weekend lock the inside front wheel at the final corner. Look at this throttle application, very nice. Very, very nice, very smooth. Nice throttle control, no wheel spin. You hear that? He, so he's not going to catch him, and uh, the throttle progression's beautiful. Gee, he really treats it well, doesn't he? No stitching, I call it, where you're in and out of the throttle. And when you look at the throttle traces in the data printouts, the little line jumps up and down. You've got to try and avoid that because it excites the rear tyre, creates temperature, makes wear. Mark Winterbottom's behaviour with the throttle is really smooth. And as we just check in on Stephen Johnson here in position 17, we'll. Say so, uh, farewells and our thanks to you, Dick Johnson, down there in the garage for giving us a bit of access into your operation. Out of 10, how would you rate your day? Well, you're dead right, mate. Thank you very much for your insight. The, the last time that we went all the way without a safety car was 2007, back in race one. Thanks, Dick. Okay, mate. And the leading car out of the Dick Johnson Racing Operation is Steve Owen in 14th position. Stevie Johnson, as we mentioned, in 17th. Dean Fiore, 19th. And James Moffat, you know, still, still in the garage. If this works out, guys, you know, it's a nice balance and an offset on, on yesterday. yesterday. And uh, beautiful drive yesterday for Will Davis. And in the end, it coughed and didn't make it. His best buddy came through in a remarkable race victory. We've covered that off in detail. And uh, it's payback today, so it seems now, for Will Davis and Rick's in. No, if this is fuel economy, he come in, Rick Kelly, come in on lap 49. So, yeah, it is a quick splash. So they've got some real fuel economy issues there compared to the rest of the field at the moment. A little bit of fuel to put this in. And other guys oh. come in at similar times. So that's really smashed him out of out of seventh position. Yeah, man, he dropped about eight litres and it was only yeah. a couple of seconds of fuel. Yeah, happy chappies at uh, Ford Performance Racing. That will bring Fabian Coulthard into that top ten that I've been talking about. It was where he finished yesterday, Compo. And Ford Performance Racing. Last time a Ford won here on the streets of Adelaide was in 2009. It was when Team Vodafone were on that side of the fence. So, Will Davison 
As we mentioned, yet to get a victory in, in his stint at Ford Performance Racing. The team yet to win on the streets of Adelaide, but they've come here and delivered today. He's been good in qualifying. He was great yesterday. And it was probably a race that he, he should have won yesterday, but fuel strategy ended up costing him, fuel economy ended up costing him, and a brilliant effort by, as you mentioned, his best mate, Jamie. And Grant McPherson on the radio today has been very, very good with him. He's coaxed him along and spoken to him very well. He's kept him informed. And as Neil said, it was a great drive yesterday. This is a real reward for the factory Ford team and Will Davison and his teammate will have a 1-2 at arguably Australia's biggest race. And he battled for the championship in 2009 with Jamie Wincup. He went through a horror year in 2010. He's been in rebound mode last year, but this weekend he's had real grit in his driving. He looks like he's determined to get a race result. It looks like today it's going to happen. There's so much positive energy at Ford Performance Racing this year. And you watch them party. Like there's no tomorrow. They've been waiting a long time. Oh, 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 he locked the wheel. And it's a, it's a good thing that he's got a big gap because he's going to celebrate coming around the final turn sideways. A breakthrough win for Will Davison. And for the first time in four years, a 1-2 finish. For Ford Performance Racing, great effort, Gartanda third. Enjoy it, all right. First one two that Ford Performance Racing have had since Darwin 2008. That day it was Stevie Richards winning and Mark Winterbottom second, and Frosty comes in second today again. Great reaction from them. That's the sort of stuff that you want to see when you've worked hard and you've been rewarded by a great result. That's a fantastic reaction from everyone involved with Ford Performance Racing. Congratulations. There's your top three Will Davison. Mark Winterbottom and Garth Tanner gets onto the podium for the factory Holden team. So many things that they've ticked off here. The Ford flags are flying in Adelaide for the first time since 2009. Will Davison, as we mentioned, gets his first race victory since 2009 and a 1-2 on FPR. Dancing in the streets of Adelaide today. Craig Lowndes ends up fifth, Shane Van Gisbergen sixth. And uh, Rick Kelly should have been in that picture. He should have been midfield in the top 10. Instead, he finds himself in 11th spot after leading a splash and dash at the very end. Stevie Johnson in 17th there. Alex Primer in 18th position. And the back end, another tale of woe. Jonathan Webb and Greg Murphy failed to start the race after a big incident in qualifying. This is the moment he's been waiting a long time for. <laughs> And after the events of yesterday, it'll just be even more sweeter for Will Davison. And not only that, for the first time in his career, he leads the V8 Supercar Championship. <laughs> what a difference a day makes. Yesterday he was shattered, he was heartbroken, he coughed and spluttered across the line. Today it was resounding. He charged across the line. Really deserves it, Matt. That was a great drive and a great pass on Tanda. And that was a critical moment, wasn't it, Scafe? He had to make it stick. It took two attempts and it wasn't pretty, but that's the result, that's the reward for a high-risk move like that. He had faith in his car, he had 
to have the faith in his ability, and he delivered so. Gartan is there to celebrate as well. So forward one, two. Brett's. sure is and look at this crowd more than 80,000 people here today coming down for the Sunday tradition at Clipsal and Will Davison by virtue of winning on the Sunday also becomes the event champion as well joins a very elite group of uh, Australian drivers to have stood on the top step of this tough and grueling race so the mother highlights take us all the way back 78 laps ago where Gartanda got a good start again off pole position Michael Caruso at turn four turned it around a little bit of love on the way through and uh, Jamie Winkup down here at turn eight. We thought that was going to end in disaster. Somehow he got away with it. Tander put his move on the lead down at turn nine and made it stick. It was a good one too. But look who was hovering. Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom. They were always there. They were always waiting. And Jamie ha started to report some popping sounds and they had to scratch their heads down at Team Vodafone and... Then Will Davison, that was his second attempt at it. That was where he won this race. He had no choice. He had to do it then. That's when he had the speed. That's when he was close enough. And talk about close. Oh, man. How on earth they did not collect. Oh. I'll never know. Shane Van Gisbergen coming in as Will came out. And from then on, it was head down. And he just kept charging. First race win since 2009. 
Where he was on the top step with Garth Tander at Bathurst. And <laughs> well, we're at this. Oh, how's I the heart? He was gone. How's the heart rate, you reckon? <laughs> and what's this? What is it? Way! Let's throw it around there. And there's a fair chance he could have backed it up. Across the line backwards. I tell you what, the, when you the, lock a break that solidly in the last quarter and then bag it up <laughs> off us, Scafie and I looked at each other and went, wow, but it is an outstanding victory for these guys. And they've been desperate for this, and so is Will. So big congratulations to all at Ford Performance Racing. That's the victorious scene. And in the end, he got home by a solid margin. Brett's on the podium. That's exactly the kind of moment that Will Davison will never forget. This weekend's been so solid, and that's the icing on the cake. The Clipsal 500 trophy and the wreath, and now the champagne. His seventh V8 <laughs> career victory. <laughs> I told you for performance racing at party, and they've started it on the podium.